Yes, sir. Oh, go, go ahead. Speaking, speaking of uh, Attorney General Holder, were you, were you one of the ones that signed on to that letter asking for his resignation? I did. I did. That seems like months ago because it was. <laughs> and uh, they asked me to sign on another one. I said once was enough. And uh, but we're, what we're discovering there, and, and you know, and I tell constituents at home, you know, it's not about them lying to a member of Congress, but it's about them misleading the American people. This is not just any bureaucrat. This is the principal law enforcement officer of the entire federal government that couldn't remember his authorization of, uh, of this. But this is the same gentleman that in a court of law that threw the case and said, you know what, I don't like the Defense of Marriage Act. Whether you like it or not, it passed. I'm sorry, Mr. Holder, you should defend it. They're actively now in court saying, we're going to undermine the law. I mean, if you were a lawyer and you threw the case for your, your client, you, you wouldn't only lose a client, you would lose your law license. And it's, it's just shocking that uh, this Attorney General is doing this on many accounts. And, and I think the American people are slowly getting that about how uh, the rule of law is in jeopardy underneath this president and his, and, and his Attorney General. As long as he started with the Philadelphia case, uh, the Black Panthers' uh, intimidation during the election, they refused to prosecute. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there is certainly a pattern of that, and uh, from a political perspective, uh, I think there's plenty of uh, folks in Washington that uh, say, you know, if, if uh, the president would like to keep him on as a, a, a role model, <laughs> of uh, a clear indication of where this president's at, I, I'm guessing he keeps him to the end, even though it's, it's, it's stunning what, what he has done. Other attorneys general have disagreed with the law, and they appointed people to implement it and enforce that. They've not done that in this case, which is uh, really a shocking but an indication of how far this administration will go. Following up from that, I think that there's a prevalent opinion among conservatives that if the roles were reversed and the Democrats found good dirt on Republican administration personnel, that they would be a lot more aggressive than the Republicans in Congress has been. It, what's the problem? Is it, is it the, the race baiting? Is it that the, the Democrats have dope on the Republicans too? Or, what, or are they funded by the same people? What's going on? Yeah, I, I recall what happened when uh, <clears throat> President Bush took office and had the mass firing of uh, uh, federal prosecutors. Mm. Well, that happens every time. Mr. Obama did the same thing. Where, where were we for talking up on that? I, uh, one of the hardest things for me in Washington is, is try to explain why folks aren't doing <laughs> what I think, think they should. And I'm not for certain on that one. Uh, but I give the chairman credit on, on the Fast and Furious and, and a number of my freshmen said, hey, when we stood up, I didn't take that lightly. And said, we uh, asked the Attorney General of the United States of America to resign. That was pretty well unprecedented and might have been done for a freshman, but it was the right thing to do. And it's, it's uh, continued to press forward on that issue. And we are learning more every day, at least the, the committee is. I do not serve on that committee. Yes, sir. Are you really, uh, obviously, with more and more that's going to be coming out with Operation Fast and Furious, more will come out of Operation Wide Receiver and Operation Roadrunner, which was under the Bush administration. Are you and other uh, Republicans in the House willing to go down the rabbit hole and find out what really went on under the Bush administration as well? I think some more information might come out on it. Again, I don't, don't serve on that committee, but uh, I think in, in my mind, the American people understand that, uh, that uh, there's a rule of law and it doesn't matter who the president is. And, uh, but I, will, I do believe Republicans have not been as aggressive as the other party has in, in following those things that uh, concern us. But gosh darn it, you're the Attorney General. You don't have an option, Mr. Holder. And uh, you have to come uh, uh, forth. And, I, and Chairman Ice has done a great job pushing uh, some of our uh, leadership and other senior members and said, hey, let's kind of wait off on that. You know, but you know what, the Second Amendment, <laughs> you can't wait on that, and uh, it needs to be protected. And, and there's Americans that have lost their lives because of this, and we deserve to know what happened. Following up from that, if I may, it, it, are, are, is there a frustration level? Is it being discussed with you and your colleagues, especially the new ones, that uh, our rights apparently are being violated in a new surveillance society, whether it's drones or TSA or whether it's... Uh, the Department of Homeland Security instructing police forces of who to look out for as potential terrorists, not having anything to do with jihadism. Uh, what, what's going on? Are people frustrated about that in Congress as much as they are in the real world? I, I would answer yes, and, but it, it varies uh, depending on, on my colleague. But in the last uh, year and a half, uh, I have uh, conducted about 100, what is it, 126 town halls with Kansans. 
And uh, their number one issue still is uh, worried about the economy, even though things are doing well in my part of the world. They're worried about the growing power of the EPA and other regulatory agencies, but they're saying this extent, I mean, it, it is fundamentally a, a, about how big government can be and what's their control and power. And this, that's what's great about this election. A lot of elections in my mind are about small issues and about little things. I think this is going to be a big election about big issues and about where we're going to head in this country. Gentlemen in the back. Yeah, we've heard a lot. Of, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, we've heard a lot about Wisconsin today. Do your colleagues, you know, as professional politicians, Democrat or Republican, see it as a big, uh, a big uh, event as if you'd like to see it here, or, or does, all, does all politics is local? Yeah. We were excited in the Republican conference. I think some uh, more excited than, than others. Uh, the message for myself and many of the other freshmen and, uh, was that uh, you know, if you do the right thing and you actually articulate a vision, you just don't hunker in the corner and vote and go home. You've got to go home and you've got to go work and explain what we plan on doing as conservatives uh, the people will respond. That's a tough place. That's the, the bedrock. That's the beginning of progressivism in this country. And they beat it straight up. But what disappointed me was the very next day, the very next day we had an amendment on the floor of the U.S. House that would have gone directly after the control and power of, uh, of unions. Uh, it was a vote to undo uh, Davis-Bacon requirements. We had 52 Republicans stuck with the unions. The day after the biggest victory we've had, that was very disappointing. And uh, that just shows you some folks didn't see the message as clearly as, as I believe that they wanted to send from, from Wisconsin. That's troubling. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, since President, President Obama has been inaugurated, food stamp use has increased by over 10 million. About 80% of the agriculture department's budget is for food stamps. How do we correct that problem in terms of solving our $1.3 trillion budget deficit? Yeah, and that, that's a significant part of that. Uh, it's not the, the major part of that, uh, but the, the growth in food stamps uh, were, was accelerated with the stimulus package and the economy going down. They qualified more people. There's tremendous fraud and abuse that numerous states, and I could get into that, participated in abusing the system. But in the last decade, the shocking numbers are, I believe it was 10 years ago, we had 19 million Americans on food stamps. And who thought that was too many? Everybody I knew. Today we have 45.7 million Americans on food stamps. To me, it's not just about the spending. It's the fact we are creating an incredible class, incredibly sized class that's waking up every day expecting help from Washington. And it's going to break our budget. It's breaking it now. But it's also breaking our American spirit because that is not the... the we become uh, much more like our European neighbors when we have 45.7 million Americans on food stamps. One last question, and I'll have to run. Despite the fact that the Republicans have a majority in the House, and you just mentioned that the day after the Wisconsin election you had 52 that sided with the unions, what do you think Republicans in the House need to do to get control of the message? For instance, the Obama administration has a full-time Twitter, Jesse Lee, that responds immediately to anything that comes out of the Republican Party or the House. Why hasn't the conservative movement set up a similar fight the smears type base. You've got bloggers, you've got conservative media that watch the news. Why hasn't the Republican House done that to get the message out? Well, as a, as a freshman, I wish I could uh, answer that. Uh, but uh, oftentimes, I think uh, just personal perspective as, as conservatives, uh, we're fairly decentralized compared to the, to the left. And uh, they've got their talking points, and we're independent. We're, we're uh, men and women of freedom and liberty. But what is incumbent upon House members like myself? It's my responsibility to go back and say in the first district of Kansas and report what's going on. Like I said, I've done that in 126 town halls, 10 or 15 of them on the phone, numerous media things. But I'll just say a lot of my colleagues aren't doing that. We've got to be willing to pick up our load as, as members of the House going back in every one of our districts. But I tell the freshmen, I think we're doing that. As a whole, we aren't winning everything. I think we're changing the conversation. I'd much rather change policy than the conversation. But what I'm hearing from my colleagues back home is we are winning that battle on the ground if we go out and do it because it's our message. We are the ones that are consistent with the American tradition of freedom and opportunity, of, of growth and prosperity. It's the other side that has to convince people to change their mind because I think most Americans agree with us. And as we move forward, that'll be part of the debate that the president will want us to draw us into things that, uh, uh, that uh, he would want us distracted. But the message is, fundamentally, is we're right. 
We understand the American spirit of, of, of entrepreneurial activity, of growth and prosperity, but we do have some challenges facing us, and uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough uh, next year, and it's going to be tough after November to actually get the right thing done in a lame duck session as well. So I appreciate the opportunity for questions, and, and thank you for those.